So no, we know that um, the conflict has been there for a long time. And so I think with the Supreme Court ruling to look at people who may not have papers all the way from 1929 is unacceptable. That's 80 years, that's generations of Haitian families living in the Dominican Republic. We know the history of conflict in Haiti with the Republic of Dominica. But for the Tribunal Constitutional Dominican, we have a decree to arrest the Haitian people until 1929. It's been about 80 years and generations and generations of people who have been affected by the arrestation. So that has had an impact not only on Haitians on the island of Haiti, Haitian, or really I would say Dominicans with Haitian blood, right, in the Dominican Republic, but also us here in the diaspora. Ça a un impact. L'impact là, c'est pas seulement un Haïtien qui est Dominicain qui est d'origine Haïtienne, mais au Cap Vim, en République Dominicaine, mais tout le monde a un impact sur nous-mêmes, tout le Cap Vim, ma pays. Because we see that it is unfair. I could see where countries and states want to work on immigration. We are trying to work on immigration here in the United States. But when you take a date such as 1929, it, it brings back a lot of emotions. Li suscite, li soulevé, en pile d'émotions. Because we know, in the 1930s, there was a huge massacre that happened. Nous connais, dans l'année 1930, nous avons eu un gros massacre qui était passé, qui a été fait dans la République Dominicaine. And it was against Haitians. Et c'est Haïti qui était victime. And we know that it was the Haitian people that really built the economic structure of the Dominican Republic. Now, this is through, and you see sugar babies, right? The sugar plantations, it was the Haitians who came through to work the fields. And other sectors in the Dominican Republic, it's Haitians that are doing it or hey, Dominicans, I'll say Dominicans, with Haitian blood. So the whole piece in terms of President Terejilo, in terms of the Posse Massacre, and some of you may know this, I know a lot of you know this, but there was a word. There were dark black people in Dominican Republic. And you know, in Haiti, we have a few of folks, right? So you see folks here, we have a few. In Dominican Republic, there are a few of folks. We're very, very light to very, very dark. And so you cannot tell, really, the difference. In the Dominican Republic, in the Republic Dominican, when we're in Haiti, we have a lot of people who 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 have so with this massacre, under the president, now Haitians, we don't really roll our R's, right? So we don't So there was a thing called the Posse. Merci, c'est Percy. Yeah. So Percy, okay? You marche avec Percy. Tout le monde noyauté, ouais. You dit ça na non Lorsque Percy na poyol, on dit ça Perahi. Après, on fait à la Perahi. In the 1930s, in Dominican Republic, to say this word, if you did not say it correctly, or what they thought a way the Dominican should say it, or someone who spoke Spanish fluently, you were killed. 15,000 Haitians were massacred. So when we hear the word 1929, automatically this emotion comes back. And I would say, okay, go ahead. Nous avons parlé de R que les Haïtiens parlent, les mêmes gens dominicains ont pris le nom de là. Donc, ils ont pris mon père Sia. J'ai dit mon père Sia en quoi Père Sia. Ils ont fait un monde, ils ont fait un monde noir. Ils ont pris un suspect qui est un Haïtien. 
Yo loge Percy à Bahou et puis yo tout qui j'en sais Et puis sous dire tant que j'aime sauf dire là, on va rien rouler là, on est là. On va dire avec mon accent dominicain. <laughs> no, so Kunia, when I say this, right? So I say this story just so we know the history. And I know a lot of you know it already. Now, this is to bring it forward. When this happens, I'm going to know that this is the story. Because the other one is from 1929. Who is this from 1929? Who is this from 2010? Who is this from 2011? Who is this from 2011? Who is this from immigration policy? Why don't we say instead of 1929, you know, that's what was weird about it, that date itself. Because, you know, you could have said, hey, let's look at 2010. Let's look at 2012. And look, let's look at the people who are here or people that are not documented. But we know that, you know, the folks who have been there for 80 years, they are Dominicans. They've never stepped foot in Haiti. This is where they've lived all their lives, they speak Spanish, and so to say that they are not citizens or that because they did not have papers, not even them, right? It's kind of like their great-grandfather, whoever originally came to Haiti did not have documentation, and I know there's experts here in this room, so please speak up as well if I'm misspeaking. Um, you know, that now we're gonna take a look at them to see if we will even consider them a citizenship. So you have, Okay, so monthly okay? I'm going to say quickly. So, it's a okay. Yeah. Problem is that I've been passing, because I've been passing 80 years. I've got 80 years, and I've got 80 years, and I've got a generation. We know that there's a lot of people who are going to the school, but what I've got is really, it's a lot of grand qui c'est docteur, c'est ingénieur, il y a business, il y a tout le monde. Donc nous avons un problème, ça va passer, parce que les gens ont un impact sur nous. So there is a big impact, okay, because again, it's looking at generations. So like your great grandfather who did not have papers because they were under sugarcane plantation. They were cutting fields, they were indentured basically servants. And so, you know, doing this work, now have families, their kids are in school, you have professionals, lawyers, engineers, businesses, business people who are Dominican but have Haitian blood and now being called into question on whether or not they are Dominican. So that is the big piece, right, in terms of this whole ruling. So I can just do a quick forward, uh, just quick update. So I've been in touch with the State Department, our State Department here, because I'm proud to be Haitian, yes I am, but I am a Haitian American elected official. I am not an elected official in Haiti. And so my impact is really with my government here to see what is it that we're doing. And so I have to say though, our delegation, uh, Massachusetts delegation signed on to a letter um, led by Joe Kennedy um, to go to um, the President of Dominican Republic and I'm asking them to craft a letter to our government to say hey we need you to really be helping to kind of change this ruling and so they wrote a letter saying this is wrong it doesn't make sense you know we're the third largest Haitian population in the United States after Miami New York it's Massachusetts so Congress is so delegation congressional delegation you have to write a letter to the President of the Dominican Republic to say, why don't you do this? It doesn't make sense. Congressman Joe Kennedy is the one who wrote the letter. But the President of the CNN, Stephen Lynch of the CNN, McGovern of the CNN, Nicky Song of the CNN. So a lot of people who wrote the letter to the CNN. Let's say that it was in December of the year. It was in December of the year. So I'm going to talk to the people who wrote the letter to the CNN. And I'm going to talk to the government to the CNN. Et puis, on a dit même bagaille là. Que qui j'en ai vraiment aidé, aidé, vous connaissez, si nous n'avons pas vraiment sorti devant, qui j'en ai aidé pour nous changer la conversation qu'on a fait là. So that's something that is happening. So um, we have a great congressional delegation. Um, they're fantastic, really, and they get it, and they've been working hard on this issue. So that's, um, that's what's happening. Letters um, to Congress just to ask for, you know, movement and really support and really trying to get this dialogue going. Um, so it's an up my day, can we let say for petition? on let que nous tout ca signer pour nous ca voyer à gouvernement panou pour nous demander que yo ca aider à résolution et situation ça nous joindre à Haïti à Dominique République